Preston Physics, Grade 11, Waves and Sounds, Note 10, The Doppler Effect. Here we're talking about the Doppler Effect. Now, a lot of people have heard of the Doppler Effect, but what the actual definition is, the apparent change in frequency due to the relative motion between a sound source and its receiver. Now, what does that mean? Well, if we have a sound source that's moving, if you're looking at the diagram below, the sound source is moving to the left, it's showing the velocity by the arrow. Now, all of the sound waves here in front of the arrow are bunching up. So this is making a higher pitch sound. The frequency appears to be higher. If we look at the sound waves behind the source that are after it's moved by, it looks like the sound waves are spreading out. Now, this is going to make a lower pitch or a lower frequency. Now, this is only apparent frequency because the object's actually moving, so its actual frequency would be different from both of these. We have a formula that we can actually find out the apparent frequency or the rest frequency based on the speed of sound and the speed of our observer. We have a positive and a negative on the bottom of that fraction, and we'll explain it in a second. We have f is the frequency when in motion, f naught is the frequency at rest, and these are both measured in hertz. v in this equation is the calculated speed of sound, and vs is the speed that the source is moving. And these are both measured in meters per second. Now on the bottom of our fraction, the minus sign would be used if the object was moving towards the observer or the observer was moving towards the object. The positive sign would be moving away from each other. So either the observer's moving away or the object's moving away. In the first example, we have a child screaming on a swing, having a great time. Now she's moving at 5.6 meters per second, and the apparent frequency is 1250 hertz. We have to find the speed of sound at 25 degrees Celsius. So if she's moving towards us, we want to find the rest frequency. So first we put down our frequency is 1250, the velocity of our source is 5.6, and we use 332 plus 0.59 times 25 to find our speed of sound, which turns out to be 347 meters per second. When we're using our frequency equation here, we're going to use the minus on the bottom of the equation because the child is swinging towards us, therefore making the frequency higher. When we rearrange this equation for f naught, we get f, the normal frequency, over v over v minus free velocity of source. We sub in all of our numbers. We end up finding the rest frequency to be 1225 hertz. Try the next example on your own, and we'll take it up in class tomorrow. A couple applications that we can look at that use the Doppler effect are actually Doppler radar and the expanding universe. Now Doppler radar, the way it works is we have a radar station that looks kind of like that. and It sends out some waves. Now if there's a storm cloud that's moving towards the radar, those waves are going to get bunched up. The waves are going to reflect at a higher frequency and then we know the storm is actually moving closer. Now if that storm cloud's moving away from the Doppler radar station, well, those waves are going to reflect at a lower frequency, and then we're going to find out that the storm is moving away because the waves are further apart. The next example we're going to look at is the expanding universe. Now for this, we're actually going to look at light waves, not sound waves. But if we have Earth in the middle of the universe, which it's not, but for us, let's just say it is, then we have all these stars around us that are really far away. And they're going to send some light rays towards us. Now the close light rays are going to have a high frequency. The further light rays away have a lower frequency, which is kind of weird. That lower frequency is actually making the light rays look more red. And the more red they are, it means that they're actually kind of stretching out. And that actually means that everything's moving away from us or expanding. 
So because those light rays are stretching out, it's allowing us to deduce that the universe is expanding because otherwise the light rays would all be the same wavelength. The last thing we're going to look at is supersonic. What this refers to is what we know as Mach. Now, a Mach number represents a ratio of how fast you're going compared to the speed of sound, or how fast something's moving compared to the speed of sound. Now, it's named after a guy named Ernest Mach. And if you're moving at the speed of sound, we know that you're moving at Mach 1. Well, the way we can find our Mach number is pretty easy then. If the speed of sound is Mach 1 and we want to kind of figure out, well, how fast are we going relative to the speed of sound? We just have our Mach number is equal to the velocity of whatever we're looking at, normally an object or a plane or something like that, divided by the speed of sound. Both velocities are measured in meters per second but it also could be a common unit, like kilometers per hour, as long as they're both measured in the same thing, then it doesn't really matter. The Mach number is unitless because it's just saying how fast you're going relative to the speed of sound. The questions associated with this note are 22 to 27 in your yellow duotank.